Okay, ODEs, ordinary differential equations, in particular, nice, sweet, linear ordinary differential equations. What does it mean by linear? Linear just means that there's only um, the derivatives of y, there's no like y squared. You can multiply it by a function just in x, but um, these are very, very well behaved. And this is a particular instance of a linear differential equation, and I'm gonna present the solution to this. And you would be right going, dude, this is just so specific. The idea that I'm gonna wander into this someday is, would be very rare, and that's correct. However, what I, what I need you to be able to do is to follow the argument. So when you're gonna be in some of your uh, more math-oriented classes, your professors are probably gonna burn through this pretty quickly, and they're just gonna go, oh yeah, they're gonna get that, they're grad students. And um, you're going to be going, whoa. So let's just try and follow an argument. So this is a lovely linear differential equation. It uh, has degree. It's the first order because it's, there's only one derivative. Second order would be y double prime, that kind of thing. Simple stuff. So now I need in almost all of differential equations. Solving differential equations is almost all tricks. Almost all tricks. Um, Nonlinear differential equations is madness. That's how you solve them and tricks. But so here's this linear differential equation. Now notice if I have e to the integral of px, this little px right here, dx, the derivative of this is by blob calculus, e to the box. The derivative of e to the box, it spits out an e to the box times the derivative of box. So the derivative of e to the antiderivative of p of x d of x is just e antiderivative p of x d of x times the derivative of the antiderivative of p of x d of x. The derivative of an antiderivative, so the antiderivative unties the shoe or it pops it out, the derivative ties the, back, uh, ties the shoe back up, it basically just spits out this p of x. So you'll notice that this is the derivative of this. So now, here's the trick. We'll multiply everything by this e to the antiderivative of p to the x d to the x, all the way across. Uh, we know it's not zero. e to the nothing is zero. I mean, there is no anything that e to it is zero. Uh, not in real number theory, anyway. And now you start to look at something. You look at this and go, hey, this looks kind of like a product. Remember the product rule. Um, if you have this, f times g, the derivative is f g prime plus g f prime. Uh, here's like, what if we did this? What if we do e to the antiderivative of p to the x d to the x times y and take the derivative of this? Well, it's going to be this times the derivative of this. So it's going to be this p of x d of x times the derivative of y. Derivative of y is just y prime plus y times the derivative of this. Now I'm gonna put the derivative of this up first. Remember the derivative, so it's y times the derivative of this. The derivative of this was given by this. So this is e to the antiderivative of p of x dx times p of x times y. And what that means is this is this is this. So I have this. I know that uh, e to the antiderivative of p of x d of x times y derivative is equal to this, which is equal to this, is equal to e p of x dx times q of x. So now I can do the trick I just did before. Let's take the antiderivative of both sides. The antiderivative on this side is just going to, so the, the derivative popped it in or tied it. The antiderivative is going to pop it back out or untie it, however you want to visualize that. So this is simply going to become e to the antiderivative of p of x dx times y. This is going to equal the antiderivative of e to the p of x dx. Um, antiderivative and okay, so that's that's I should have used a different color with that times q of x dx. So the antiderivative of this side equals the antiderivative of this side. Ultimately, this means that we can figure out what y is. y is equal to, I'll just divide both sides by this, 1 over e 
to the antiderivative of p of x dx times the antiderivative of e to the antiderivative of p of x d of x times q of x dx. This is a really sweet deal. This, I mean, these kind of tricks are what makes the magic mathematical world go around. And we're gonna come back and just see one of these, but like I said, if you never see one of these in your coursework, and you never see one of these in your real life out in the work world, the point of this is for you to be able to look at this and follow these arguments. If there's anything on here that caught you, like your pants and all of a sudden, oh, where'd that go? Watch this again. This should be something that you should be able to do, maybe write down by hand. Make this your own. Just make it your own because a lot of arguments that you're going to see along the way, um, you're going to have to make your own more soon.